Welcome to part 7 of our Photoshop tutorials. My name is Arnold Faller and this time it's uh, going to be a rather quick one um, and it also has the potential for you guys to go out there and um, try something for yourself. The task is how to get yourself on a picture 10 times and I'm going to show you some examples. So here's some work of students that uh, did put themselves on uh, on a picture 10 times. I'm quickly browsing through a couple of them. So you can see some people did it indoors, some did it outdoors. Uh, the most important part in this uh, task is that you actually overlap with yourself at least one time. So here you can see it because those are the tricky parts and you will see it right away as soon as we go into the editing. So in this case, the person overlaps with itself many times. Let's continue. Here's one more, but still there is uh, plenty of overlapping going on, even though the, the person uses up much more space outside. And here is another one inside. That's also a fun example um, for the Corona lockdown times when you are at home and you are, are bored. There is a, that there's plenty of ways to entertain yourself. And here's another one 10 times. So the task is be on the picture 10 times overlap yourself at least once and here is how we're going to do it. Uh, I'm just showing you parts of it and I'll give you a few tips. So the first one is, let's go back to this picture, the first one is bring a tripod or make sure that your camera is on a, in a steady position. If you do it outdoors, also make sure that you do it in a rather short time because the sun will move and then the shadows will change and so on. Also, um, even though you bring a tripod, it's also wise to bring a second person uh, that uh, presses the shutter for you and records a couple images. If you have a remote control, you can also do it with a remote control or with a 10 second timer. Uh, the next thing is uh, you want to make sure that you take more than 10 pictures because I just took four or five and I found out that some are not suitable. So make enough pictures and later on you can choose which, uh, which one you take. And um, the rest is all up to you. You can change your clothes or you can change different positions and have different eyewear and so on and so on. So let's see how we do it. So let me start with the images that I took this morning. And uh, therefore, I'm going to use a function that is called uh, scripts load files into stack. So I'm not going to open one single image or open every single image, but I'm going to load files into stack. So therefore I can define more than one image and load them all as layers into one image. So here it is. I have took, I took five pictures and I define them, browse, and I define the pictures and hit OK. And now they will be loaded all into one frame. So it takes a second. Okay, there it is. And now I have all those layers visible. Uh, you know that we can one by one turn them on and off. And um, you can also click and drag down in order to turn off more than one layer or turn on those layers. But you can also use an alt click on one layer and then all the others will be turned off. I'm going to use this one as my bottom layer. So I'm going to keep that as a bottom because at that point there's also another person back there which I like uh, uh, quite uh, quite a lot because otherwise it would have just have these black shadows there. There's also one picture that I'm not going to take and this is this one because obviously I'm at the same position and not, they're not overlapping but they're just uh, on top of each other. So I'm going to delete one and I just have four images to show you how to do it. So uh, I turned off all the layers and I just decided which one is my bottom layer which I'm going to keep. And now it is pretty simple how you do it. You just, uh, this, uh, if, let's say you have 15 or 20 images taken. First of all, you decide which images that you take. So you delete, you kick out all the others. Make sure that you at least overlap yourself one time and that you are nicely um, a placed or arranged in the space. So here's my four images. The second one, they hardly overlap, just a little shadow troubles here, but this is how it works. So you turn it on and off a couple times to see where the problems could be. In this case, there are not too many problems. So I turn it on, select the layer, and now I pick um, a lasso tool to do a really rough selection of my uh, body in this picture. So 
a rough selection, just a, a, a finger of extra space. Make sure you take all the shadows with you. So if there's a shadow reaching out, you also have to include the shadow. If there's a reflection in some kind of glass or window, you also have to take the selection. So everything that is necessary for this image can be even can be a little bit more. And now with the selection and the, the, the layer selected, you add a layer mask to it and the selection will automatically go into a layer mask and will make everything else invisible. So this is everything we have from this layer. Later on we're gonna do the fine tuning but for right now this is uh, good. The next one turn it on and off. That is really simple because this one has uh, nothing to do with the rest so I can go right in with the lasso tool and make a rough selection around everything. Uh, make sure the shadow is included and while the selection is on, the layer is selected, I'm going to add a layer mask to it. Here's another problem. If you have a camera that allows you to do a manual exposure, to set the exposure time, to set the aperture and the film speed to a uh, fixed uh, number, so everything manual, then it's much better because then it's not likely that the pictures have, um, have different uh, brightnesses, so that the brightness is not changing. In this case, uh, that is the major problem, that this picture is actually a, bit, a little bit brighter than the rest and we have to adjust that. Okay, so it's done. I have the shadow and have me on it. And the last one is here. And in this case, we have a little uh, interference with the two shadows and of course also with the ladies in the background. So I, again, I'm selecting the fourth layer, choosing my lasso tool and I am drawing a rough selection. A dirt mask, so like this, select it, layer selected and add layer mask. So now we have two uh, areas to take care of. First of all is here the finger is interfering with the shadow, the shadow is interfering with the, uh, the foot of this picture and there's a little thing to clean up here between the two and the brightness there. So we only have four pictures but it's already a lot to do. And also you can see uh, in this picture that the brightness is not precisely the same as the background image so we also have to soften this off so that we don't see it. And also you can see I took these pictures within probably two minutes and you can see that the shadow already moved. So that was taken in the early morning. So uh, I already get different shadows there. So let's uh, start with the first one. Uh, no, that's good. We don't have to do a lot here. Just check it out. Okay, so there the shadow has to be adjusted for the first image on top. I'm going to zoom in to 100%, uh, right click 100% and now I am selecting the mask. I'm using a brush and to paint on the mask in white, make things visible or in black, make things disappear. So what I'm going to do is uh, right now I'm painting in black. I'm painting away this area. So now I get the full shadow uh, from the layer underneath and I'm also going to paint a little bit here to soften up the effect there. There is uh, some of the shadow is here which I'm gonna do by switching to white and I get the shadow back. Let me check out if there are some other edges there. No, that's good. So uh, that is that is okay. The next thing is um, if I turn on the next layer, no sorry I do this one first, the top one. The top, this front layer here has problems with the shadows there so let me turn it on and off. You can see that I should actually see the foot and not the, 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 the part of the layer. So I click on this layer mask here and paint away the top layer. Uh, you can spend as much time as you want to uh, to put some details on it so you can make a, use a smaller brush, uh, switch between foreground and background. I'm just doing it roughly so uh, there's not uh, too much time to spend on it. Okay, so I have fixed it here and that is the only area. The next thing is you can also see that we have some edges around here so I also need to have a brush with soft edges and a little bit larger, not the smallest one, and then you can paint away the sharp edges and you won't see them anymore. So it's good here, it's good here, and it's not so good there. 
So let's paint away things. And now we have reached another area where there's a mistake. So the shadow of this layer is interfering with my hand. So I also need to paint to uh, get the shadow back. For this uh, case, I have to go in a little bit further. So I'm going to do a right click and choose a 200% and I'm going to fix the shadow and the finger there. So uh, on the brush tool, first of all, I get all the shadow back. And then I use a smaller brush, even a little bit smaller, to switch the color and get my fingers back. Let's see where the fingers are. Yes, the thumb. And now get so. That is uh, enough. Okay, so. On the last lay on the last thing that we the last thing we need to fix here in 100% is on this layer a couple of things first we want to make sure that we get rid of the edges and then we're going to adjust its brightness so that it uh, that it's the same as the background layer let's find the correct layer it's this one so we're going to adjust the layer by simply placing an adjustment layer on top of it so i'm going to use adjustment layer curves and make sure that this layer only affects one layer underneath because we just want to adjust this one. So here it is. Press this button and now the curves only adjust one layer underneath. And what do we need to do? We need to make this layer darker. So I'm going to add a point here in the middle and just pull a little belly into it. That is already too much. So there it is. So I just made it slightly... That's so slightly darker. Uh, you can also use instead of curves. I know it's not my favorite, but you can also use uh, the exposure, for example, exposure um, uh, adjustment layer. Make sure it also affects this one and just make the exposure slightly darker. In this case, I think it even looks better. Yeah, that looks good. So the exposure adjustment even almost reduced the uh, uh, almost uh, reduced the effect. Totally. So I'm going to turn the effect quickly off and now I'm going to add a soft edge to it so it's, it won't uh, show up as a sharp edge. I'm going to use on the mask a brush, this time the soft one, a little bit larger, yes, and I'm painting. Instead of having a sharp edge, I'm going to turn it into a soft, let's see here, and think the rest is good. So we still see it, yes, because I have turned the adjustment layer off. So now the adjustment layer is on and everything's fine. So that's basically all we need to know for this task. Uh, in this case, I'm only four times on it. So you need a little bit more time, spend more time, take more pictures, uh, walk to different locations and so on. So here's one more time the references that my students did. So, uh, sorry, starting um, when you're indoor, it's of course much more complicated and you have much more overlap, uh, overlapping between the, the, the pictures. Uh, outdoors, tight spaces, again, a lot of overlapping. Uh, here's the exterior, much more spaces, and here's another interior. So make sure you have all, not, all, not only the overlapping areas are nicely uh, photoshopped but also reflections shadows and things like this that you have to include and the best way is to use a manual camera setting in order not so that the camera is not changing the focus it's not changing the white balance it's not changing the the exposure all the time so set it all to manual fix it once so it looks good and then take all the pictures with the same settings okay so uh, let's try it go out take the pictures and uh, try it yourself hope you have some fun and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.